Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chautauqua People. My name is Ira Cooperman, and I have the honor and pleasure this evening of interviewing Jim Roselli, a, uh, a famous person here on WGTN. A, um, a, 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 what is, what's the expression? Uh, famous in his own right? No, a, uh, a legend. A legend. A legend <laughs> in his own time. That's it, a legend in his own time. And his microphone, actually, is probably more famous than Jim is. <laughs> He's been using a microphone for uh, over 60 years now right. here in the Jamestown area. And uh, so it's our pleasure to have you here, Jim. And this is a turnabout is fair, fair play because you usually do all the interviewing and you've interviewed me many times on your program. But uh, thank you for coming on Chautauqua People. We're happy to have you here. Well, today. Ira, thank you very much for the invitation. I, I really look forward to this opportunity. Because I've had the pleasure of interviewing you a number of times. You're always very kind to update me on wonderful history, uh, your great classes that you teach at Chautauqua, and now you got a chance to get even. <laughs> right. That's right. That's the idea. That's the idea. Well, we're going to start off with a, with a quote. Uh, I've got a quote from a paper that uh, when you were honored last, uh, this past summer, uh, and according to this quote, you once said that if I can leave people with a little more knowledge about things they never would have known and a little more enjoyment, I'll be satisfied I did my job. Is that true? Is yeah, that I, I, I take that attitude that uh, I, I've got an opportunity to really present all of what Chautauqua represents in those interviews. And I, I really want the local audience to realize what's in their backyard, history in the making. Right. When you stop and think of uh, uh, the sacred space of the amphitheater and who has put their footprint on there and uh, who has delivered uh, these, well, the I hate war speech and uh, what more can someone ask than to be in that environment and get the local audience to uh, get more informed about uh, how fortunate we are that this is in our area. And if they go away, uh, feeling they learn more about the personality. Uh, I always get a big joy out of knowing that someone immediately went to the bookstore to buy the book or, uh, or wanted sure. to know more about that particular subject. Sure. Yeah, we're fortunate to have the Chautauqua Institution here, and I know it's been here since, uh, what is it, 1874, I believe. So it's almost been 140 years, in fact, uh, Next year, 2014, will be uh, 140 years. It'll be our 90th year at WJTN. Your 90th year on uh, broadcasting. Yeah, the station. The station. 1924. Wow. And it'll be my 40th year at Chautauqua. Wow. And you've been coming here since, what, 1953? 1974. 1970? Yeah, it'll be the 40th year. Very good, very good. But I know you've been in broadcasting longer than that. But let's Well, I graduated from St. Lawrence in 1949. Right. But let's, I, uh, I got my diploma and went home, and I didn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's always a problem. <laughs> yeah. I had what, what you call audition tapes, and I had sent them out, I remember, to five different locations, Ira. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember sending a tape to Bangor, Maine, Pikesville, Kentucky. <laughs> you know why? Why? They wanted a play-by-play -play basketball announcer. And you had been and done... And I wanted to do play-by-play. -play, you, well, you had been doing play-by-play -play at St. Lawrence, right? Yeah. Right. I did all the uh, baseball, football, and basketball games. Right, right. And then I sent one to uh, Norfolk, Virginia, and uh, Amsterdam, New York. Mm hmm And I was waiting for the reply, you, you know. Right. And the only encouraging note I had, the letter that got me excited was Amsterdam <laughs> at a station called WCSS. And I, the way the letter was written, I thought, there's another letter due to say report for duty, you know. Oh, yeah. And right. I waited. And Military. Got, I did get the letter, but it said, after long consideration, 
we decided to elevate someone on the staff mm. so to the sports position. So you didn't get the Amsterdam I job. I didn't get the job. Well, that's lucky for us. Lucky for Jamestown, <laughs> lucky for Chautauqua that you didn't. But I know that you were considering doing something else besides going into broadcasting. What, uh, what else, what other career were you looking at besides broadcasting? Well, Ira, uh, a good part of my life was spent at the Boys Club. That was the right organization to be in town mm -hmm. during what you call the turbulent years of teenage. All right. Right? Sure. And we couldn't have asked for a, a, a better opportunity to go to a club right. and, and be active in the club. Mm -hmm. Not only physically, you know, where you'd play uh, basketball and touch football and all those games, but also to, uh, to uh, learn sportsmanship. Yeah, and, citizenship, things like yeah, that, patriotism. The, 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 the director's name was Robert Clements. And he was more than just a director. He was a teacher. And in fact, I got a part-time job there being program uh, manager for the game room, you know, where the kids would sure. be playing ping pong or billiards. And, right. And I was in charge of that area. And I loved working with the kids. I really enjoyed it. And at one summer, I even spent as a counselor at a camp in Allegheny. Uh, and... Mr. Clements actually was asking if I would want to go into the social business, and he was looking at a scholarship possibility at Springfield University huh. in Springfield, Mass. Right, where the Basketball Hall of Fame is. Yeah, he, right. was, he graduated from there, and he thought, I could possibly get you a scholarship, and you can go into boys club work. And I gave it some serious consideration. But I had that urge. Yeah. You know what I mean? You always loved sports, though, didn't you? I, I wanted to be a sports play-by-play -play right, man. Right. Well, that's... And I, that was such a, you know, I was really uh, focused on that area. Right. And I just thought, uh, I've got to try that first. Right. So now you left uh, St. Lawrence University, and you got your first job where? Where did you get your real first job? Part-time at WJTN, just part-time. Right. It really started, believe it or not. A 10-minute show on Sunday afternoon. Really? Called Alley Dust. Huh. You know what that means? It's Alley a dust? bowling show. Oh, bowling, bowling. Can you imagine reporting bowling scores <laughs> and trying to make that exciting? Wow. <laughs> but that's what I did. Really? And uh, it was a, a, a gentleman who ran, owned a bowling alley, and he was kind enough to say to the station, I'll buy the show if you let Jim Roselli do it. <laughs> wow, that's a great compliment. So I that's picked really nice. up a 15 minute bowling show. 15 minute bowling show. And got started. Wow, didn't you also have a job in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania? That was my first full time job. In Harrisburg? First part of the, right. And you were doing sports in, in Pennsylvania also? I did play by play of Steelton High School football. Oh yeah, that was big, I mean football in Pennsylvania. Big deal. Big deal down there, yeah. Well in fact, uh, I rather, the first game I did was against Reading, PA. <laughs> and in the backfield of Reading, Reading was a big favorite in the game. Right. They had a running back that they were, you know, very proud of. His name was Lenny Moore. No kidding. The yeah. famous Baltimore Orioles. The famous uh, uh, Baltimore runner for the Baltimore Colts. 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 Baltimore Colts. Colts he was right. in the backfield for Reading. But the surprising thing, yeah. we upset them. No kidding. 20 to 13. So Harrisburg beat Reading. Wow. <laughs> Steelton beat him. Steelton. 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 Right. That's pretty good. But you did return to Jamestown to WJTN. and um, I was in Harrisburg for a year and a half. But may I go back to that job? Sure. Okay. The reason I want to is it was Mr. Clements, the boys club director. Right. Who was at our club for six years. I told you about the six years of our teenage life. Right. He then moved to a position in Harrisburg Boys Club. Oh. And we missed him. Sure. So uh, he left in 1945. Right. Well, three of us in 1951 were talking, and we said, let's go visit Mr. Clements. You know, let's surprise him. Sure, so he went down to Harrisburg. So we, made, we called the... We called them, and well, I said, Bob, uh, how would you like three visitors, you know, and Frank and Joe and me? Oh, he said, Jim, it'd be a delight. 
right? Oh, well, well, we're coming down, and we made the arrangements. And then, as, as just an offshoot, I just said, with your pull, would you get me an audition at a radio station? And believe it or not, Ira, That's we got you. there, we had dinner, we talked about old times, and suddenly he said, I've got an audition for you tomorrow morning. Wow. At WHGB in Harrisburg. Isn't that great? And I went there and was offered the job. But the other thing, Bob, I mean, Ira and I, 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 I anytime I get this opportunity, when I, when, it, when I told him the job was offered to me, he said, well, what do you plan on doing? I said, well, I certainly have to look for an apartment, you know, and, right. and get organized. And he said, no, you don't have to look for an apartment. You're going to live with us. Great. What a nice guy. Wow. Ooh. Well, you know, wow. I mean, he, uh, he knew you and uh, he knew it. you were a good yeah. guy. And uh, yeah. you're both from Jamestown, so yeah. that's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. So you've been uh, you've been at the station now for sixty years. Sixty years. You can't keep a job, right? I mean, you really can't keep a job. <laughs> Terrible. Well, that's all right. And then and you started broadcasting from the Chautauqua Institution. Nineteen seventy four. Nineteen seventy four. The reason that happened, Ira, if you're going to ask that question, mm, by all means. Okay. <laughs> I love it when somebody asks prior that question. prior to that summer. Right. Each summer, I would look at a copy of the Chautauqua schedule, and I kept saying to myself, why aren't we there? Mm. Why aren't we doing a show Sure. with that lineup that was available? So in 1974, when I looked at it in advance, here's the name on the program, a speaker, a lecture one morning, right. Charles Goodell. Ah. Was he a senator then? No, he was... Uh, Congressman? Uh, he was a congressman first. He was a congressman then, right, right? Yeah. But Charlie Goodell was my high school class president. Oh, so you knew him. And I said, he'll give me an interview. Sure. I felt certain he would use sure. that. Sure. So I quickly, believe it or not, I jumped in the car when I got off the air and drove up to Chautauqua and went into the office and right. said, I have the following opportunity. Could I broadcast from here? And they said, what do you want to do? I said, well, Charlie is going to be the speaker. Right. I'm sure he'd like the local audience. Uh, I, I would like the local audience to hear our former congressman. Well, he's a local boy. Local boy. Sure. Plus, remember, he was senator, too. That's right. He, he replaced, replaced Bobby Kennedy. That's right. And so they said, well, where are you going to broadcast from? And I said, well, I'm a little guy. I don't need much room. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a corner. And yeah. we suggested the patio. So you first started broadcasting from the patio, what was then called the refectory, and yep. now it's called the Brickwall Cafe, right. right? Right. And you were sort of outdoors, you were yep. outside. Under the can right. And we could all see you, right? Right. And uh, this year, is this, or last year, was that the first time they moved you indoors? So right. We, uh, they, we started on the porch of the Hawkwist building. Right. But then we had to move every Wednesday from there. Right. Remember, because of... Uh, they have, and uh, we had to switch. Right, they have And so blocks. we felt it's best to stay in one location, you know. Right. And this year we went to the Cove. Yeah, you're in the author's alcove, Al they call it. That's what they call the, it. The, the author's yeah. alcove. Right. But I think everybody follows you. I don't, I don't think it matters where you're located <laughs> because everybody should talk when knows you. You get people not only to come to talk to you, but you get people to come and listen to the people you're interviewing. Sure, guys like Ira Cooperman no, no, no. and Bob but, Hopner. <laughs> but you do, get, uh, you do get a lot of people for Mark Russell. You do get a crowd when you're interviewing some of the uh, celebrities and some of the world leaders that you've had. Right. Tell, us, uh, tell us about some of the celebrities. I know you mentioned uh, National Football League Commissioner Roger Goodell, uh, the son of uh, Charles Goodell. Uh, Interesting because, uh, Myra, he was working in the in the uh, refectory. He was working as a, as a youngster? Yeah. Wow. He was working in the refectory. And when, we, when I got acquainted with him, we talked about his father, you know. Right. And I even found some old uh, political buttons uh, during his campaign. Oh, and I surprised him by giving <laughs> him a button or a, one of the uh, right. advertising uh, slogans. Sure. And uh, he would come out each morning and literally... Uh, clean around the table that you see 
because people would leave napkins on there and sure. some ketchup or whatever else, and he would clean it, and uh, we'd be underway. And now he's the commissioner of the National Football League. Yeah, one of the most important sports figures in America, that's for right. sure. Who are some of the other uh, celebrities, not not world leaders, but how, some of the other celebrities that you've interviewed? And I know you've uh, you've interviewed, I think, Tim, the late Tim Russert, who was with ABC for a long time, a famous newsman from Buffalo. Everybody remembers Tim. He, uh, he died prematurely, but I think you interviewed him one, once upon a time, didn't you? Who, uh, the, the newscaster? Tim, Tim, yeah, Tim Russett. The Tim news. Russell from Meet the Press. Right. Yes. Right. How was he to interview, considering the fact that, like you, he usually interviewed other people? Yeah, he was very accommodating. Was he? Very, in fact, when he came to be interviewed, he said, do you mind, I, I've got to run to the uh, post office, you know, and I, I certainly wasn't going to interfere with what he had to do. Right. I said, take your time, yeah, and he, he did, and he came over and very cooperatively uh, answered my questions about, uh, you know, the responsibility of running Meet the Press and the opportunity it gave him to meet and greet the people, so. Sure. What a, and then his son came uh, two years ago, or three years ago. Right. He, he uh, narrated the conversation between Roger Goodell and, uh, uh, and uh, Mike Slive of the Southeastern Conference. Right. And I, his son's name is Luke Russert. I was there then. That was a really right. uh, very popular uh, And evening, he's now an afternoon. investigative reporter for NBC. Is he? Yeah. That's very good, following in his father's footsteps. Yeah. That's great. That's great. What are some of the other uh, celebrities or people that you've uh, interviewed? I, did you interview uh, President Clinton, Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton when he was governor of Arkansas. When he was running for president? Or yes, he was, he was running for the Democratic nomination. Uh huh. And that was in June, and he got the nomination to be the president, uh, the, the candidate for the Democratic Party, right? and won the election. Wow. That was 91 I had him. Right. Know. And he became president in 92. 92. Yeah. How did that interview go? Anything? Uh, anything oh, he on? was, uh, <laughs> he, he came with a shirt and tie and a jacket and all of that. Right. And he looked around and he said, gee, everybody is very casual here. Yeah. Off went the jacket. And he loosened the tie and, and we went at it. Good. Yeah, well, he was very kind. Yeah. Very kind. He has a reputation of sometimes being an informal person. So yeah. uh, that's, that's pretty good. I know this season we've had a lot of uh, people who are uh, Supreme Court judges. Did you get a chance to oh, interview one of the Supreme Court judges? Ira, uh, that was a complete surprise. I, I've looked past years where we've had Supreme Court justices. Right. The, the opportunity never existed. Right. They're and I of, thought, well, I can understand that. They're sort of untouchable, right? Yeah, they, you felt that. Right. You felt they're untouchable. They're, they're, their lives are so busy, so active, and... Uh, and they don't like to give interviews normally. Yo, they don't like to you, tell you, people what they're heard thinking, that. right? They're not available. That's what I've heard, yes. But this year, believe it or not, to suddenly see Ruth Bader Ginsburg come to the studio right. and wait her turn, because I was interviewing Jim Johnson of the Jackson Center. Right, he's president of the Jackson Center. And I Center. was there looking at her and realizing, that's my next guest. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of awesome, isn't it? Hell, yeah. and then you stop and think, I'm not going to be cutting this interview quickly just as, as she's waiting, because I thought he was kind enough to give me the interview. What right. was interesting is Jim Johnson said to me, I gave her a tour of the Jackson Center yesterday. Uh-huh. And that, that sort of set, set the stage. Sure. Well, that was good. So how was that interview with Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Did that go well? Yes. I, you know, Matt Warren, my assistant, yeah. he timed it. And I, I tell you, when I stop and think, and you can't help but, you know, flirt with this idea of saying, do you realize that you had 41 minutes with a Supreme Court justice? Wow. Anybody on, Wolf Blitzer on CNN would love right. five minutes right. if he had the opportunity. Sure, national reporters, big and time reporters. And she answered every question. I quizzed her on the fact that right. there's been a move afoot to try to 
overturn Roe versus Wade. Right. She gave a real explanation of why that I don't think will ever happen. Good. Uh, and what did and she then say? I said, well, what about the fact that there's been a lot of, uh, uh, you know, opposition to the Citizens United. Right, right. Citizens and she United. explained how it happened, how the vote went. But in the end, she said, I believe that will be overturned. She really said that she thought that that decision will be overturned, right. the Citizens United. That's, uh, that's interesting. That's really yeah. interesting. Well, you've had a lot of interesting uh, guests. Uh, did you have any particular favorites besides the ones that we're mentioning now? Any other people that uh, you interviewed that you really enjoyed interviewing them and uh, they turned out to be a lot of fun? Well, Mark, I mean, Ira, you got to, you've got to look at what Mark Russell has done for me. It's not one interview. Right. It's an interview each year he's there. Right. And, and you helped to celebrate his birthday too, don't you? That's right. Mark's birthday is uh, in August, and uh, yeah. we always like to celebrate his birthday at yeah. Chautauqua. And Mark was kind enough to come to uh, at my uh, uh, 55th party without me knowing about it. They called it a mystery guest. <laughs> we'll join you at the at the party, you know. Right. And who hap who it was was Mark Russell. Mark Russell. Mark. Well, all Chautauquans know Mark. He's a, he's a great guy. He really is. Now, I know that over the years you've been honored by a lot of people, but if I remember correctly, a few years ago, weren't you honored by the New York State Broadcasters, uh, uh, Broadcaster of the Year or something like that? Tell, tell us well, about I'm that. I'm in the... Um, <laughs> Hall of Fame? I'm in the, broad, in the Hall of Fame in the New York State Broadcasters. As long as you're not in the cemetery, that's okay. Pardon? The, as long as you're not in the cemetery, <laughs> the Hall of Fame is a, is a better place to be, right? Yes. Uh, I had uh, very little... It was the management that put in the uh, nomination. That's great. And they, they take the nominations and decide to induct, I think, five people per year, you know. And uh, they, I remember doing my morning show. In walks the general manager and right. the sales manager. And they wanted a moment on the microphone. And they said, we've just received word that you are going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, at the Hotel Sagamore in uh, uh, Lake Placid. Lake Placid, wow. Yeah. That's neat. Well, you've had, you've had a lot of honors, I know, and you've had a lot of uh, really special moments as a broadcaster. Looking back on them, um, I know you're originally from Jamestown, right? Right, you born, born and raised. Born and raised in Jamestown. Mm -hmm. You have, what, six or seven brothers and sisters uh, you had originally? How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, we just go no. with the numbers. Seven but, siblings, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of seven children. My mother came from, and my father came from Sicily. Hmm. They, they didn't come together. Right, they came they separately. Came separately. To America. Right. They came here in 1909. And in that time period, they came in order to earn money and then earn enough and take it back. Right. That was the intention. They thought they were going to go back to Italy. Right. They thought they were going to go back to Sicily. Right. Instead, they met each other. They married. And started God a, bless. Started a family. They raised seven children. That's, uh, that's wonderful. Three brothers and three sisters. Do you still have some of your siblings alive? Uh, I have, uh, out of the seven children, only three remain. I'm one, obviously. My brother Joe lives in North Carolina. My sister Anne is 96 years old this month. Wow, wow. That's amazing, it really is. And uh, I know you had a very strong mother who uh, helped, uh, helped to encourage you to go to college. That's why I said to you, how much time do you have? Yeah. She was, uh, my mother could not read, could not write, and could not speak English. You know? Right. And you wonder. But what she did have was what, all, what a real mother has, yeah. and that's love. A lot of love and yeah. a lot of moxie. Uh, uh -huh. She worked really hard and helped you to, uh, to go to college, right? Yeah. And you I'm were, the only one that had that opportunity. You're the only one of seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You must have had really a strong mother, that's for sure. Yeah. Amazing, Ira. When I look at what she did, uh, I think I got a little extra attention, right? simply because of some physical situation you know right. and uh, she worked hard 
uh, to see that I maybe I could uh, do what I wanted to do and when I wanted to go to college she just decided she'll do everything she can to make it possible. Yeah, wonderful. Hard work. That's, that's really work. wonderful. It really is. Well, looking back on, uh, on your career, uh, 60 years in broadcasting, 40 years at Chautauqua, <laughs> I mean, all the things that you've done, um, would, uh, would you do it all over again, or would you try to go oh. into a different career? Or how, <laughs> how do you feel about looking back? I feel I've been blessed. I've been blessed. What, you know, I don't know how you play the game about your life, but I know when I think about it, I'm just a, you know, a, here I am from a, a wonderful, loving couple from Sicily um, in a situation where I, if I sat back to think someday, Jim, you're going to interview a president, you're going to interview a Supreme Court justice, you're going to interview a great comedian, you're going to interview governors, you're going to interview poet laureates, you're going to interview Nobel Prize winners. Right. It, uh, someone would say, you know, get the white uniform out. <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy, and, huh? Right. No, but you really did. You did all those things, and you yeah. also interviewed a lot of just average Chautauquans. You interviewed That's a lot pleasure of, of it. nice people, right? That, well, you know, it was uh, O. Henry that I read one time that said, everybody's a story. Right. Everybody is. Everybody every, every, is a story. And your my, life is totally different from Bob's or mine. And right. You, uh, I'm, I'm as fascinated with your life as I would be with Bill Clinton's life. Sure. And I think people that, that you interview understand that, that you pay attention to every one of the people you interview. You respect each one equally. It doesn't matter if they're a Supreme Court justice or if they're a governor or <laughs> just another Chautauquan that comes to Chautauqua every summer. Well, they each have different experiences. Right. They each have, uh, each of them, uh, you know, their, their journey from being young to where they are, they had maybe the roller coaster ride we all have, the ups and downs and what influenced them, what made them move in the direction they went in. Right. When I, you know, you, you've heard my question, I call it the journey question. Right. Where does the journey begin? And what, what path did it take? Where did you go? Where, who were the influential people along the way right. as to how you got where you are today? Well, we're glad that the journey took you from Jamestown <laughs> to Chautauqua and back to Jamestown. And uh, you're certainly an, an honored staffer of WJTN, as well as uh, somebody who's really loved and respected by, by all Chautauquans. I'm hoping that the Chautauqua Institution may rename uh, the author's <laughs> alcove the uh, James Roselli uh, alcove uh, in the future. Take it easy, Ira. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Don't have that much influence, but, uh, you know, we, we like to think that we do. At any rate, um, you really have a record in broadcasting that's probably never going to be broken. Um, and we congratulate you. And, Jim, I thank you very much well, Ira, for being on so the much. program. Thank you. It's really nice. It's an honor for us to, to have J Jim Roselli. And we hope, uh, we hope that uh, those of you who are watching will tune in again uh, to see more of uh, Chautauqua people. Um, this is Ira Cooperman thanking you for watching. We'll be back in 2014 and hope you will be too. And hope you'll keep coming to the Chautauqua Institution in beautiful Chautauqua, New York. Thanks very much for watching. Bye now.